<laughs> You're listening to The Hour of the Time, and I'm Pooh. And I'm William Cooper. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sweetheart. You're welcome. I'll come and tuck you in later. <laughs> okay. Good night. Um, did you forget to say good night to Allison? Oh, good night, Allison. And she's awake right now, but it's her bedtime. Sure is. It's yours, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See you later. Okay, bye. Well, folks, let's, uh, well, first I want to uh, tell you for those inquiring that uh, had static during last night's broadcast, what I delivered to you was an article that appeared in Conspiracy Nation, which was written by Sherman Skolnick. Sherman Skolnick. And uh, while Sherman Skolnick has done some excellent uh, research in the past, He's also done some uh, pretty laughable uh, research in the past, and that's why at the beginning of the broadcast I said I would leave it up to you whether you give it credence or believe it or not. I will tell you that most of what he has discovered about Lawrence Myers agrees with what we have also discovered. So it appeared in Conspiracy Nation... And it was written by Sherman Skolnick. Let's go to Phoenix now for the Metal Report with Frank Marzullo. Did he? Whoops. I think I just goofed. Uh, Frank, if you're listening, call right back. I think I just accidentally cut Frank right off. Well, while we're waiting for him to call, folks, I want, uh, I want all of you to know that tonight's program is going to be an eye-opener. If you have any socialist friends... Uh, you had better get them into your living room because what you're going to hear tonight is for everybody to hear, especially socialists who have bought the Marxist lie and really don't know anything about Karl Marx, who he was, what he propounded, and uh, all of that stuff. Again, Frank, if you're out there listening, call back because I think I cut you off accidentally, was not intentionally. I can assure you, but you did get cut off. So, uh, there he is. Good evening, Frank. Yeah, that's okay. I'm sorry about that. I that's all right. I just, just flipped the radio on to see what was going on. I kind of figured something like that happened. Yeah, I reached out and hit the wrong button. So <laughs> I do that occasionally, too. What's happening in metals? What's happening in metals is we're starting to see a strong showing again. We ended up, uh, we started the week at right around 395, worked its way up very, very slowly. Today we had a strong showing. We closed at just above 398. The Dow Jones Industrials have been pretty much on a decline. They they made a real strong showing on Monday. They went up uh, almost 100 points, and they've been in a decline since then. Uh, we got a new report. We get all these different newsletters. Franklin Sanders, uh, somebody finally figured it out. And like you've been pointing out, you know, the dollar, these Federal Reserve notes are not dollar. A dollar is a unit of measure as is a quart, etc. When you break down the financial markets and you use gold as the yardstick, it's pretty amazing. It makes it very, very easy to look at what's going on with the Dow action, with the stock market action, and it's even worse than what you would expect just using the figures that we get from them as it is. It exhibits some of the classic failure features, uh, you know, ready to, ready to fall. But what's more important uh, that people should be watching are the bonds. On Friday, March 8th, we saw a big decline in the Dow. And uh, with the bond market, though, it's far more important because the bonds are pretty much what supports our currency system. The bonds took a very heavy hit. Right now, they're having a very hard time getting people to buy bonds. It's, it's not happening. If you had bonds, and you, know, you were holding bonds last Friday, basically, you got to wait uh, 30 years before you can, you got to wait till maturity until you can get anything back. You've lost so much principal that you've got to wait that long to make it up. And these are the things that we can continue, we can expect to see occur given the new currency, given some other situations in this country, as you talked about last night. 
we don't know half of what's going on. The foreign markets, the foreign newspapers, these people know far more what's going on in this country than most Americans do. Or ever will, for that matter. Yes, exactly. And they are getting out of our paper. They are, they are dumping our paper. They are getting away from America as far as they can. And it should be real indicative to people out there to not be fooled by things as they are. And if, if you are, truthfully, you're going to get exactly what you deserve, and that's absolutely nothing. If you got your head on straight and you're paying attention to what's going on and you get done what you need to get done, you're going to get through what's coming just fine. But if you get greedy, you're going to get what you deserve, and that's the ride to the slaughterhouse. But watch the bond market. It is not a good place at all. Uh, you know, Don't be paying so much attention to the Dow because it's, it's biased just by inflationary trends. The last information that I've seen reference the new money that's coming out on Monday is that they're going to have an initial issuance of $80 billion. Now, we've talked about before, there's $350 billion in circulating notes currently. That's basically a 23% increase in paper right off the bat. After that initial increase is when they say they're going to start doing exchanges. When old hundreds come in, they're going to put out new ones to replace them. Well, we're talking about a 23% increase in the monetary supply. That's inflation. Real simple. That's devaluation. It's probably going to have a fairly, uh, at least initially, positive effect on the surface. Enough to get Bill Clinton elected. It'll, it'll probably boost the economy somewhat, you know, to have a little bit of a loosened money supply here. You know, they've been cutting these interest rates and, you know, fight inflation, fight inflation. And here they go because they're getting ready to unleash it very quietly. And it's going to be very bad in the in the medium to long run, but initially it'll probably give enough boost that the gig turn out there will think, oh, my life is a lot better now. I'm going to reelect Billy and Whitewater and all this other stuff. They're going to try to, to shuffle it under the rug. This is just one of the many ways it appears that they're going to attempt to do that. Hmm. Well, the last time they did it, everybody thought it was wonderful for the nation. They still praise Ronald Reagan. Yeah. But all of the money that he flooded into the country by borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and, and putting it into circulation um, caused the value of the dollar to decrease. Property values, everything went up to make up for the decrease in the value of the dollar. It takes more dollars to buy anything. People are worse off now. Exactly. And they're still... They're still praising Reagan, who and, did it to them. Exactly. <laughs> here we have a, a replay of Reaganomics uh, in the wind here, and people just don't have a clue. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if, if he's able to carry this off. There's a lot of rumors going around out there that you know uh, Clinton may attempt a situation to regain sympathy, a la another Ronald Reagan situation with John Hinckley. And that's, that's kind of, I don't know, yeah, I mean, I don't discount anything any longer. It wouldn't, I wouldn't put that past uh, Clinton just as with the Duran incident. But, uh, you know, if he can pull this one off, he probably won't need to do that. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he's up to. He's just, he's such a slime ball, it's unbelievable that the American public is just so enamored with that idiot uh, that they just allow these things to slide. I just it's just amazing. It's just absolutely amazing what goes on in Washington and that people don't do anything about it. When all you gotta do is pay a little bit of attention to what's going on and become uh, somewhat informed, then you start wanting to know more and then you start listening to this program and then you really get hooked. <laughs> Well, you got any last uh, parting comments? Last parting comments. Get it done, people. Monday's the day. Uh, it goes out of the federal depositories on Monday. Uh, we'll probably see it in some of the larger banks on Tuesday, your smaller banks by the end of the week. Uh, you should be able to get your shiny new $100 Federal Reserve notes. I would anticipate to see the inflationary tendencies not long after that. Probably not initially, but it should be very quickly after that. Things will start getting... Uh, more and more expensive. It's already tough enough to make ends meet for a lot of people. Uh, like you pointed out, two people are having to work to get the same income that one did only 20 years ago. Not even 20 years ago. Exactly. So, you know, get it done now while, it, while you can afford to buy something. 
because these are realities. It's going to happen. It's starting to happen. That's correct. And by the way, folks, we were not wrong on all of our dates for the issuance of the new money. We got our dates directly from the United States government, from the Treasury Department, and uh, they have changed the date every time, and they may still change this date. We don't know. Well, but like you pointed out, the pagan aspects of the Mystery Babylon state springtime. Marking. Oh, yeah, and you're hearing all these little comments all over the place. Sure. It makes sense that uh, it, it all fits. Okay, thank you, Frank. Thank you, Bill. We'll talk to you later. You're welcome. Good night. 520. Oh, no, we're not going to do that. 1 800 289 2646. Call Swiss America Trading. Talk to Frank. Uh, talk to anybody there if you can't get a hold of Frank. And uh, make sure that you tell them that you're a steady listener to the hour of the time and you'll get red carpet treatment. And ask them for the newsletter and all that stuff. Okay, folks, uh, don't go away. I'll be right back. And remember, if you've got any socialist friends hanging around or across the street or down the way or something, go drag them into your living room because they've got to hear this. So do you. Did you ever wonder why our constitutional republic is suddenly called a democracy? We march for the strength and country, from brook and hill and vale, where factory yards are empty, and the rusty gear for sale. Our country will not thrive again, our strength is not for yours. The goal of prosperity has never come to us. Quote, democracy is indispensable to socialism, end quote. Now, why is that, do you think? Well, it's simply this, ladies and gentlemen. They're calling the United States a democracy now. It is not, never has been. It is a constitutional republic. A constitutional republic is where there is a balance of power. In the federal government, that balance consists of the executive branch, the judicial branch, and the legislative branch. In the election process, where we elect our representatives to go and take care of business for the state in Washington, D.C., we elect representatives. Our founders set this government up so that senators were picked by the state, not elected by the people. This would make sure that our constitutional republic could not become a democracy and thus turn into an oppressive, dictatorial, socialist state. For they understood the process well. 
the first step into turning the United States into a democracy was taking the power of the state to choose its own senators away and put it in the hands of the electorate or the people. Whenever the people see that they can vote themselves whatever exists in the treasury, socialism quickly follows. For when the people find out that they can vote themselves whatever they want, and that's what's happening in the country today, people are voting themselves whatever they want, Congress is voting themselves whatever they want, everybody is moving this country more and more into socialism. With socialism, eventually comes a dictatorship. With a dictatorship, always comes fascism in its various forms our total and absolute control and ownership by the state of everybody and everything and that is known as communism freedom disappears ladies and gentlemen when people become dependent upon the state or upon a dictator or upon a king or a lord or an emperor, or a baron, or a duke or duchess, for their very existence, for their job, for their clothing, for their food. When this happens, people, without even realizing it, have become enslaved. In the pursuit of laziness, and in the pursuit of the dole, getting something for nothing, which, folks, is a dream that never, never comes true, there is no such thing as something for nothing. When you accept a benefit from a benefactor, you give away some of your rights, for the benefactor has a right to dictate the manner in which you use the benefit. When you become a child to a father or a mother, the father and the mother have the right to dictate. What time the child gets up, what the child has to eat, what kind of work the child does, if the child goes to school or if the child does not. What time the child has to be in bed, whether the child can go out, whether the child can drive a car, whether the child can have a bicycle, whether the child gets any gifts at Christmas time or any other time of the year for that matter. And when people become dependent upon the state, they become the child and the state becomes the father. And you had better understand that. That is why Lenin understood, and our founding fathers understood, that democracy is indispensable to socialism. Did you ever wonder why the United Nations military is called peacekeepers? Because Karl Marx said this. Karl Marx wrote the Communist Manifesto. I quote, Peace is the absence of all opposition to socialism, end quote. Let me say that one more time. Karl Marx, quote, Peace is the absence of all opposition to socialism, end quote. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, that Karl Marx was a bitter failure at absolutely everything that he ever tried? Have you ever really studied his life? Probably not. He was a bitter, absolute failure at every single thing he ever tried. Did you know that Karl Marx was a racist who hated Jews, blacks, and the common man? In particular, Slavs? That's right, let me say it again. Karl Marx was a racist. He hated Jews, he hated blacks, and he hated the common man. 
your Marxist professor in college, didn't tell you that, did he? Did you know that Karl Marx was nothing more or less than a stooge for a wealthy capitalist named Friedrich Engels? Did you know that socialism was created by the rich as the ultimate method of enslaving and controlling the masses by making them totally and completely dependent upon the state? If not, ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you not to read college textbooks about socialism, but read the actual dialogues between Marx and Engels. You see, they were prolific writers. They wrote letters to each other and to other people their entire lives. Forget the textbooks. They're lying to you. Always, if you want to know the truth, go to the source. That's why I get so angry when somebody calls me to find out what their congressman is doing in Washington. <laughs> Read the dialogues between Marx and Engels, and you will find it all laid out clearly for anyone to see. Even the sheeple will understand it. Of course, it's dry reading, and it takes a lot of time, and it's boring to wade through all of that crap, because that's what most of it is, absolute, total crap. But if you want to find the truth, you've got to do that. Those who have been teaching you the lie about socialism know that you won't, in most cases, ever even attempt it. Of course, before you start, I must tell you that you must have a brain and some rudimentary intelligence, something that most socialists apparently lack. You see, modern-day socialists have perfected propaganda techniques to the point that the biggest lies are now regarded by the sheeple as absolute truth. For reference, read the ravings, and I mean ravings, of Chip Burlett, the Southern Poverty Law Center, the Anti-Defamation League, Hillary Clinton, the first androgynous president ever, and other socialist organizations and socialist writings and speeches who were at work destroying this nation, the greatest nation that ever existed in the history of the world, the only nation that ever existed that ever set men and women free in their own right. For you see, freedom has never existed anywhere else in the world, even unto this day, except in this country. For instance, let me take one little common big lie that the socialists have foisted upon the American people and they have swallowed hook, line, and sinker. You see, the concept of right versus left. With the socialist given that the left extreme is communism, which is good somehow, left liberal, communism, socialism is good, and the right extreme is Nazi bad. This has happened through repeated connection of Nazi with right, and not any basis in fact whatsoever. It is a deception of the greatest magnitude, for Nazi is not right, never was right, and can never be right, pun absolutely intended. You see, ladies and gentlemen, any scale must measure two extremes, or it's not a scale. In effect, heavy versus light, white versus black, light versus darkness, fat versus thin, and etc. You see, the concept that a scale measuring left versus right has at its two extremes elements of total control and oppression is absolutely ludicrous and is one of the biggest lies that has ever been foisted upon this world. The truth, ladies and gentlemen, the truth is that the scale measures at the extreme left the total control and ownership of everything and everyone by the state. This is called communism. Versus, at the right extreme, the absence of any control of anything or anyone by anybody, which is called anarchy. 
Between these two extremes are all the other forms of government and our control or absence of control. Somewhere near the middle is our constitutional republic. Didn't you ever wonder, ladies and gentlemen, how the socialist big lie made anarchists absolutely disappear from the equation? On the left was total control of communism. On the right was the total control of fascism under Nazis. What was anarchy supposed to be in the middle? Where our constitutional republic actually sits? Didn't you ever wonder about that? Or do you ever wonder about anything anymore? Have you been so conditioned, so brainwashed, that you just accept whatever comes across the big eye, the propaganda machine of Big Brother in your living room? You see, Nazi could never be on the right. If on the left is socialism and communism, Nazi cannot, absolutely cannot, could never be on the right. For Nazi is simply gutter slang, ladies and gentlemen, for national socialism. Nazi originated from the German Nationalist, excuse me, German National Socialist Workers Party. You see, Hitler was a socialist. Hitler nationalized almost everything. He had social programs for everyone and every circumstance. Hitler was engaged in a program of social engineering never before attempted by anyone or any government in the history of the world. Hitler repeatedly made reference to a, quote, new order, end quote, and a, quote, new order of the world, end quote. You see, folks, the so-called New Age movement is nothing new. It actually originated in Nazi Germany, and most of what is extant now as New Age was, in fact, in vogue then. Communism is also a manifestation of socialism. Nazis can only exist on the left just above communism, which, by the way, exhibits more facets of fascism than the Nazis ever did murdered more people than the Nazis ever did. But that does not excuse what the Nazis did, don't get me wrong. What I'm trying to do is show you the truth and expose the big lie under which you have been living for so many years. For all of these lies taken together are forcing you down on your knees, are propelling you over the cliff toward a death in a world of socialism where you will be enslaved in a cashless system of debt chained to a computer forever. Where ownership of private property is forbidden and where the school in the community will be merged with the mental health center and you will be required to attend from birth to grave. Another socialist lie is that fascism is an expression of the right. However, ladies and gentlemen, when one studies history, it is found to have only existed in socialist regimes. Fascism is an expression of control which only exists on the left, because on the left side of the scale is where control lives. It only exists in that place. Although communists and socialists will vehemently deny it, fascism only reaches its full potential in a communist system of government where literally everything is owned and controlled by the state. And the only thing that matters is the welfare of the state. 
The God is the state. The Father is the state. The provider is the state. And the executioner is the state. If you don't believe it, get out your dictionary. The Webster's Encyclopedia Unabridged Dictionary of the English Language defines fascism as, and I quote verbatim, one period, sometimes capitalized, a governmental system led by a dictator having complete power, forcibly suppressing opposition and criticism, regimenting all industry, commerce, etc., and emphasizing an aggressive nationalism and often, but not always, racism. If the communists were nationalistic, go back and read the rhetoric of the Soviet Union. Read the rhetoric of Cuba. Read the rhetoric of every socialist and communist nation that has ever existed that you will quickly discover that you are wrong. You say a world government cannot be nationalist? Yes, it can, ladies and gentlemen, and it will. And it is already beginning to show the signs of that. For if you are not in the politically correct frame of mind, where you speak of the world and the world community and the brotherhood of nations, as the number one priority, what happens to you? You, be, you can mark off one world among the worlds and the stars and the suns and the asteroids in the universe and still be a nationalist. The definition that I just read to you from Webster's Encyclopedic Unabridged Dictionary of the English Language describes not only Hitler's Germany, but the Soviet Union for all of its history, and every other communist regime that has ever existed. But somehow the socialist, Chip Burlett, Southern Poverty Law Center, the Anti-Defamation League, the World Federalist, and many, many others, the United Nations as a body, want us to believe that freedom-loving Americans on the real right are Nazi, fascists, racists. And it simply is not true. All of these little idiots running around calling themselves Nazis and believing that they are on the right and believing that they are for freedom and believing that they support the Constitution for the United States of America are not only lying to you, ladies and gentlemen, they are lying to themselves, which is the worst thing that any human being can ever do. They are nowhere near the center much less the right. They are firmly on the left, firmly established in that foothold known as socialism, which breeds dictators, which breed fascism. And if you're a Nazi, or you think you're a Nazi, and you're hearing this for the first time, you'd better sit down and think about it. Because what I am telling you is the first truth you've ever heard in your life. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that the Soviet Union has a history of persecuting Jews and other minorities. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that you have never seen a black man in the leadership of the Soviet Union ever. May I remind you that the Soviet Union has always benefited its minority states last when and if they were ever benefited at all. And that is only if you consider the concept of we pretend to work, and the state pretends to pay us a benefit. Love on the door 
that the luxury becomes a force. For they don't approve of love on the dose On the unemployed assistance board We've no room of our own There's nothing but the benches in the park Where we can sit alone and hold our hands and whisper in the dark We can't do the things that other lovers do And it's hard to live on nothing but dreams When the things you dream can never come true There's not much sense in life But it seems Honey romance, for we love each other body and soul. In our hearts we know we haven't a chance, for there's no such thing as love on the door. Love on the door. How does, ladies and gentlemen, how does old Chip Burlett, the Southern Poverty Law Center, the ADL, the United Nations, the World Federalists, and all of these other people who espouse a socialist new world order, how do they explain our, I'm talking about me and you, real Americans, how do they explain our resistance to more regulation and control? How do they explain J.J. Johnson, the black leader of the Ohio Citizens Militia? How do they explain me? Me, William Cooper, one of the foremost leaders of the Patriot and Militia Movement, being part Native American and married to a Chinese wife. How do they explain my two top assistants being Filipino? That's right. Michael Aponte and his wife Sharon are Filipino. Americans, solid Americans, understand freedom, liberty, and are ready and willing to die for it. Should they be called upon to do so? How do they explain the Jews for the preservation of firearms ownership under the leadership of a real American patriot, Aaron Zellman? How do they explain the many blacks, Hispanics, Jews, Orientals, and others of all races and religions who understand truly freedom and belong to patriot and militia organizations? How do they explain our defense of freedom in behalf of all peoples and religions? How do these fools explain our call for more individual responsibility and accountability for an individual's actions? Well, the answer to all those questions, folks, is they can't, they don't, and they won't. Because to do so will force them to admit that they are wrong and that socialism is wrong. And we are not racists and bigots and terrorists. In fact, exactly the opposite is true. For what we want to give to the population of the world is freedom, responsibility, a sense of self-worth value, satisfaction, real education, an installation of the truth. What they, on the other hand, wish to bring into the world is total and complete absolute control over every single person upon this earth from birth until death, for every single moment, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year of their lives. Shackled in slavery, in a cashless 
system of debt to a computer forever. Where you have to have a card to travel or to get a job or to obtain medical care where you cannot own even the simplest rudimentary weapon to defend your person and your property, which, by the way, you will have none of, since private property will not be allowed to be owned in the New World Order. In fact, you really don't own it now, although you think you do. How can Chip Burlett, the Southern Poverty Law Center, the Anti-Defamation League, the United Nations, the World Federalists, and all the other socialists and socialist organizations call themselves freedom-loving Americans when, in fact, they support the emerging Gestapo police state and incessantly call for more governmental control over every single facet of our lives. How many of you have really thought about that? How can these people call themselves freedom-loving Americans when they call those who are sworn to def protect and defend the Constitution for the United States of America, racists and fascists and terrorists, when in fact, ladies and gentlemen, the Constitution is the only document in the history of the world that ever set men and women, including blacks, free. How can they claim to be freedom loving Americans and call those who are sworn to protect and defend the Constitution for the United States of America racists and fascists and terrorists when the Constitution is the government and the supreme law of this land. If we, who are sworn to protect and defend that document, that government, that law, for the protection of all peoples, of all races and religions, are racists and fascists and terrorists, what, pray tell, does that make them? At the very least, ladies and gentlemen, it makes them guilty of treason. They are, in fact, traitors. They are the agents of change for international socialism, commonly known as change agents. I'm letting you think about that for a little bit. Do you really have a grasp on what I'm trying to teach you tonight. Many people write me letters and say they're thankful for my ministry. This is a ministry, ladies and gentlemen, but it is a ministry of freedom. Freedom. For all peoples, all religions, all races, and I can only bring it to you because I personally believe in God. And I know that all beliefs must be free will choice beliefs or this whole process, this whole game is nothing but a joke. Therefore I give you because God gave me your right to your personal choice. Anyone who truly understands freedom will do that. Anyone who will do not do that does not, has not, ever understood truly what freedom really means. What the Founding Fathers really were trying to give to us and to the world. 
those who are bringing or trying to bring into existence the new world order know nothing of freedom, care nothing for freedom, and will not ever allow you a free will choice about anything. With freedom comes a great deal of responsibility, personal responsibility. You are responsible for your actions, and I am responsible for mine. Which means that if you decide to take a walk on a cold day, along a sidewalk that you know is covered with a sheet of ice, and you slip and fall, how dare you sue the city? How dare you sue the city? How can they do all these things, ladies and gentlemen? How will they do them? Why have they been doing them? The answer is very simple. It's because Chip Burlett and the Southern Poverty Law Center and the Anti-Defamation League and a lot of the highest degrees of Freemasonry, the Order of the Rosy Cross, and all of the rest of them. I could spend an hour naming off all of these so-called fraternal organizations. The socialists and socialist organizations are change agents of international socialism. And they are, in fact, fascist. If you don't believe it, look at the legislation that they are passing through the Congress. Look at what is happening in this country. We are coming under a police state, the likes of which Hitler's Germany never saw. There is in this country being promulgated a Gestapo. which will bring a new definition to the word terror. They are change agents of international socialism, and they are in fact the fascists. They are in fact the Nazis. Chip Berlad and all of those of his ilk are the real Nazis, and who, if they are successful in their efforts, will usher into the world the most oppressive and unescapable system of slavery under a totalitarian socialist world government that this world has ever known. They are internationalist socialists and care not one iota for the Constitution individual liberties, freedom, or the principles and ideals upon which this nation was founded. And many of them are Jews. And that absolutely amazes me, for aside from England, this has been the only other country that has ever welcomed Jews as whole and complete citizens and has given them a home opportunity, and wealth. And has protected them from persecution and continues to do so to this day. You see, it is the promise These people are trained by their leaders, their rabbis, to be professional victims. And I'm talking about the ghetto Jews. They are lied to and manipulated, and they are people just like the rest of us. And if you were in their shoes, you would behave in exactly the same manner. They are told by their leaders that the world is their enemy that you and I are their enemy, and it is not true.
Joseph Goebbels would truly be proud of Chip Burlett, the Southern Poverty Law Center, which has never done anything whatsoever to help poor people with legal representation in the South or anywhere else, or with any other type of help. It is a sham, a scam, a con. through which they collect money to vilify Americans, to vilify the Constitution, to vilify patriotism, to vilify freedom and bring about oppressive laws, the police state. The Anti-Defamation League engaged in the manip manipulation of Jews and spying for foreign governments and outright treason. Not to mention the fact that they have been caught on many occasions promulgating the racist, anti-Semitic events which causes the Jews to empty their pockets into the coffers of the Anti-Defamation League. Let me say that again so you'll understand it. Remember, Jews are people just like everyone else who have been lied to and manipulated by organizations like the Anti-Defamation League, which is engaged in lying to Jewish people and everyone else, in specifically the manipulation of Jews in order to bring about oppressive laws and the New World Order, and spying for foreign governments and outright treason and criminal activity. A more proper name for this organization would be the Defamation League, for that is truly what they are engaged in. And all other manifestations of socialism that are at work to destroy the United States of America. How is it? Ladies and gentlemen, that Chip Burlett and his cohorts do not know that the first thing socialist and communist regimes do when they gain the reins of power is to execute the intelligentsia that brought them to power. How is it that all these Marxists in our universities and colleges can promote Marxist socialism and expect to survive in light of socialism's terrorist history and its record of persecuting those people who are bringing them to power? How is it? ladies and gentlemen, that the Anti-Defamation League screams, screams, yells, and begs for gun control, knowing all the while that if the Jews in Germany had possessed guns and had formed militias, they would never have been thrown into ovens or labor camps. And how is it that they have been able to maintain the manipulation of the Jews in that regard, even unto this day? That they actually believe that if they disarm everybody, they'll be safe. Well, they won't. Because I happen to know from my research of those who are bringing about the New World Order that they intend to completely obliterate from the face of the earth all existing religions, nation states, and free peoples. You see, Jews will be eliminated right along with Christians and the followers of the nation of Islam, along with all of those people whom they call useless eaters. You see, socialism has scammed the oppressed peoples of the world into believing that socialism offers them relief and a future utopia upon this earth. And it is a lie. How is it 
that in the face of the research done by the Jews for the preservation of firearms ownership and Aaron Zellman, that Jews do not know that weapons control has always been followed by genocide in every instance that it has occurred in the history of the world. There's a book that I want you to read, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, what you heard tonight is my original research in writing. It belongs to me. I wrote it. I take full credit and responsibility for every word. It is the truth. Whether you like it or not. But I want you to find this book if you can and read it. I have no idea what year it was published. But it's called Karl Marx, Racist. And it was written by Nathaniel Weyl, W-E-Y-L, a Jew. Karl Marx was also a Jew who hated Jews, black Slavs, and the common working man. I believe that the reason that he hated these people was because of his own failures. Because he was an abject failure in everything that he ever attempted in his entire life. This book takes exactly, word for word, from the writings of Karl Marx, Friedrich Engels, and others, the proof, the absolute proof of where socialism came from and what it is really all about. And it's not even remotely close to what you think it is about. And that's why no socialist nation or regime that has ever come to power anywhere in the world has ever fulfilled the dream of the socialists. Over the past three decades, much has been written about the racist views of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels and why it is that nobody knows about these views is beyond my understanding. Most of this literature has been devoted to demonstrating that Marx, though of rabbinical descent on both sides of his family, was a fanatical anti-Semite. More limited attention has been given to the fact that the private correspondence of Marx and Engels is filled with contempt for Negroes. In fact, their common expression for Negro was nigger. Marx was a hate-obsessed man of rage and envy whose contempt for the common man knew absolutely no bounds and who detested Jews, blacks, and Slavs. He and Engels, in their writings, went so far, ladies and gentlemen, as to advocate wars of extermination against Slavic peoples and the destruction of Russia. Can you imagine that? Don't miss tomorrow night, because I'm going to quote from this book. I'm going to read from it verbatim. Good night. I hope you think long and hard about what you've heard tonight, especially if you're a socialist. And even if you are, God bless you all. <laughs>
Let us pray. 